Let's build your squeeze page, timestamps below, along with some other helpful videos and links to building out the rest of your funnel and of course, driving traffic. So for this guide, we're going to be using Mailer Lite. Link in the description. If you do decide to upgrade your plan, we receive a small commission as a way to support content like this. So once we're inside of Mailer Lite, we'll go ahead and navigate to sites and then click on create landing page. And we'll go ahead and give it a name and then we'll go ahead and click on save and continue. Now, Mailer Lite will actually ask us on the next page while we wait, which you will totally get used to loading and wait times. And it's, yes, it's still loading. It's not just my slow internet connection. They will ask you what list you want to add people to. So you can create a new group. And so everyone who enters their contact information will be added to this group inside of Mailer Lite. Or you can go ahead and select one that you already have. I will just go ahead and select our main list here since this is a demo. And then we'll go ahead and click on save and continue. So link in the cards and the description to a video that actually walks through how to set up these automations and what to do once people actually enter their name and email. Now, of course, they have a bunch of templates. I'm just going to go ahead and click on the first one, the book one. And I'll go ahead and select that because we're going to remove every element on the page and start from scratch. So even if you decide not to use MailerLite, you're going to want to use this design in whatever page builder or email marketing software you decide to use, unless you go with ConvertKit because you can't actually modify those landing pages at this time. It's so slow. And after waiting for the page to load again, you can see that it's loaded in the template, but we're just going to immediately come up to here, not save and publish, okay. Remove content blocks, and then we get to remove them all. Remove, and we will go and click on remove here. And now we need to drop in our blocks. So what do we actually need on our squeeze page? Well, all we need is three main elements. We need to grab attention, build some interest with a actual image of whatever your lead magnet or offer is, if you're doing a webinar or something else. And then of course, we need to collect that contact information. Now, ideally you just ask for the email, although because of design restrictions, I'm actually going to ask for the name and email with MailerLite, although it's totally okay to just ask for the email. And so that does it for all of the elements that we need on the page. So in terms of what we actually need, we're going to click on blocks here. And by actually, I mean what it's going to be inside of MailerLite. We're going to add some text. And then of course we need to collect some contact information. So we'll grab a sign up form here and click and drag it below. And finally, we are actually going to do text one more time. And the only reason I'm doing this is because you probably need some sort of legal stuff at the bottom. So of course I can't give you legal advice on what you do or don't need. Just check with your advertisers or platforms on what you need. So the first thing we need is a headline. So I'm going to shortcut the process and jump over to our sales funnel organizer and grab the information that I've already pre-written. There's a link in the description to check it out and learn more about it. It's a simple template that we use when we build any sort of funnel because it allows us to just enter in all the information that we need. It also has some headline formulas and examples. And that way everyone on our team knows exactly where to go to get the information. Also includes some information for custom bullet points if you wanna do that on your landing pages, as well as to help you out with your rapport sequence and of course, writing all those emails, which are blank. And it even goes through checkout pages and whatnot. So we're actually just going to focus on the landing page copy. And the main difference between a landing page and a squeeze page is just gonna be the bullet points. We're going to skip the bullet points for this one. So I'll scroll down to our squeeze page example, and I will go ahead and grab our squeeze page headline text and just go ahead and drop it in. And then of course we need to format it. So I'll go ahead and center the text here. There we go, align, <laughs> align and center. And once we've centered our text, we'll need to come over here to this pencil icon. So we'll click on the pencil icon and then we can select the font size that we want. So let's just go ahead and bring this up to something crazy like 45 click on save, and now we have a nice big bold headline. So when you want to make changes, it actually works better if you make the changes for the color and the font size over here, in addition to the line height. And that's simply because the interface is a little wonky when you're editing font sizes here and here. So if I select all the text, you can also change the font size here, but you can only go up to 30 and then when you make these changes here, this stops working. So I'm just going to go ahead and undo that. So make your font, <laughs> Jage is over here. 
And uh, that's something I literally just learned today. And so the last thing I'll do is go ahead and bold the text cut because I totally messed up the formatting there trying to show you what not to do. And we can leave it blue, but let's see, this is going to be about YouTube. So let's go ahead and make it a, a red color. And we could probably, we'll change it one more time and definitely could do a better red color, but we'll go ahead and leave it alone for now. So the next thing we're going to need is our subheadline. And this is why I recommend having everything written out. Also, you're probably going to change page builders in the future. And it's going to be really nice when you already have all of the text in another place. So I realized I forgot to add a text box for our subheadline here. So I'll go ahead and add that, drop that in. And of course, you don't want to manually hit enter ever with any landing page builder. That's going to totally mess up the responsiveness. If you want these on two lines, then you need to change the padding on the left and right and have tell it in the backend code will actually pull it together for you. Just don't hit enter. That's going to mess stuff up. So we'll go and select all of this. We will align the text center. And then of course we need to increase the font size. So I'll hit edit again here for this element. Yes, I'm on the right element this time. And then we'll go ahead and change it to match our headline text. You need, you don't want more than two different font styles on your landing pages or squeeze pages. And then we'll just bring the font up until it looks good. And actually I think 25 is a good place to stop. And I'll go ahead and make this a darker gray text. So I'm going to click on more colors here and then I can go a custom color because I don't want it to be black, but I do want it to be a dark gray. So that probably looks good enough. Of course, you can always come back, spend way more time than you need to on the colors. And we will fix all of the padding in a second because this doesn't look all that great. Now, the next step we're going to need is, of course, our image or building some interest around what we have to offer. So I will click on this edit icon here and I will click include media image or video. And so now I have an element where I can add in the image of our lead magnet. So if I go back to our funnel organizer here, you'll see that we already created an image. I'll link up in the cards and the description to a full blown video on how to use Canva to make images like this one. And of course your entire lead magnet. So for time purposes, I've gone ahead and already uploaded it to Mailer Light because my internet's slow, Mailer Light is slow, and nobody has time for that, right? So I'll scroll down and select our image here, and then it will drop it in. And we can go in the bottom right hand corner and click and drag to make it bigger or smaller. So I think that's probably good enough. And now it's time to edit this because we have a lot of extra white space here. So we'll go ahead and click on to edit the entire element again. And this time we're going to click on form and I am going to add the name field. So we'll ask for name and email and inside of MailerLite, that's the only way you can get these to stack. Now, uh, the next step is making it so it's not so small and changing this button away from red color because red means stop, not go. So we want the button color to stand out a little bit and not be red. So the first thing we will do is change the form element text sizes so that it's easier to read because that's really small right now. So we will come over here to form elements, click on input, and we'll go ahead, change it to the same font we've been using. And of course you can choose whatever font works for your brand color. And then we can just click and increase it and you can see the boxes start to get bigger. So I think 18 or 21 is a good number to go with for the font size for these. Mailer Light stops us at 18. I guess they don't want it to be too overwhelming. So we'll go ahead and leave that alone. And then we need to change the subscribe button call to action color. So we'll come over here to the color and we'll change it to green here because green means go. We can also change the hover color. So we'll go ahead and change the hover color to a darker green. So that way when someone mouses over, it gets a darker green color. Of course, you can match it to your brand styles if you want. And then of course, we'll change the font to the same one we've been using and up the font size to as much as we can. So we'll do it to 24 and we'll go ahead and click on save. Now, this page, again, is not gonna win any design awards. I, I really like saying that, but that's why I showed you those conversion metrics in the beginning because people don't care that the page is super well designed. It just has to look decently nice and really this lead magnet is what's driving the conversions, not the page design. And it just needs to be really clear and easy to read. 
Now, the other elements that you could add to your squeeze page is of course that legal disclaimer text that you most likely need to have, not saying you have to have it or you don't have to have it because I'm not giving you legal advice in any form or fashion. And the other thing you can do is include a testimonial or self quote at the bottom so people know that this is actually your squeeze page or your landing page. So in this particular instance, what we could do is we could come over to, oh, we'll go and click on save. And then for our blocks, we will select a image and content and we'd put that right there on top of what may or may not be our disclaimer text. I'll click edit here and I will exclude the buttons. And so I'll come over to our sales funnel organizer again. You can see why I like doing all the copywriting ahead of time. It makes this process a breeze because you're gonna be in a very different mindset when you're trying to write good sales copy versus just building the page. This should be the easy part, right? So I'll go ahead and italicize this because it's going to be a quote. And there's nothing against quoting yourself because most likely, like the rest of us, you don't have a bunch of testimonials already. And so what this does is it allows people to know who they're giving their contact information to. So I'll click on browse here and I'll drop in a photo of, we'll just, we'll just say this is, this is the, uh, this is the person creating the, the squeeze page here. And so this would be a picture of you or a successful client that you've had. And then the last thing we'd want to do is switch the alignment. So we're going to put the media position on the right. And so that way the quote looks like this. We could play with a lot more of the formatting, but the last thing that we want to do here before we get to the success page is to of course change all this spacing because the spacing looks really bad. So the way to do that is to click on this edit or pencil here and then just drag these bars to about zero or 10. So I want the headline right up top. So I'm actually going to leave a 20 spacing, 20 padding. And the reason I do it tighter together is because we don't know how much traffic we're going to get from mobile versus desktop. So it's better to have things a little too close together than really spread out and having someone on mobile try and scroll and scroll endlessly. So I do the bottom spacing at zero and then the element, the next element, I'll do the spacing at top spacing at 10. So there's 10 in between each one of the elements here. And so we're just clicking and dragging. And I think this last one is the last one we need to do. Bottom spacing, we'll bring it to 20 because it's the last one. And then we'll bring the top spacing again to 10. And then we can click on save and publish, or we can click on preview so we can see the landing or squeeze page that we just built. And so here's a preview of the page that we've put together. So I'll go ahead and exit out of here. Of course, you are going to want to create a success page. And here's an example of what the success page could look like. You don't necessarily need to do anything fancy here. You just want people to go check their email to get whatever they just opted in for. And since you now have a good understanding of how to use MailerLite, we won't go through the process of creating that from scratch here. And I'll just remove that extra space because apparently I dropped in some extra space when I was copying and pasting. So we'll go ahead and click on save and publish now. And if you decide to upgrade your plan, you'll be able to create a custom domain. Otherwise you can just use their domain. Of course, upload a favicon. And then for analytics and custom code, I'll link up in the description to a Google Tag Manager playlist that goes through all of the tracking that you should be setting up if you decide to run paid traffic to this page. Even if you're just doing content and you have a couple of lead magnets that from your blog or YouTube channel, you definitely want to do the, do the tracking as well. And so we can go ahead and copy our URL. We'll open it up in a new tab and our squeeze page is complete. It's live, it's ready to be shared on whatever your, with whatever your traffic strategy is. So thank you so much for watching. Sincerely hope you are much more confident when it comes to creating your squeeze page. Make sure you check out that link in the description to grab a copy of our sales funnel organizer. Hit that like button, subscribe for more landing page videos and marketing videos just like this one. And until the next, keep building the business you love.